Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video and I was thinking about what to do for a mission this week and I thought why not visit the Mun uh, in a very small Apollo recreation. Uh, I didn't have much time to make a video this week so it needed to be something fairly simple I'm afraid but I think nonetheless it came out pretty cool. Basically I set myself the challenge what is the absolute smallest Apollo recreation we can make. I say that this is by no means the absolute smallest you can go, but I wanted the uh, the caveat of having an actual command pod uh, as part of the ship. Like, you could make this thing a little bit smaller by having the pilot Kerbal sit inside a service bay with a chair, and that's it. But I wanted to have some luxuries to it, so this is my attempt at making a Saturn V configuration rocket in the smallest profile possible. Those that have decent memories may remember that I actually did a mission like this not too long ago. Actually, it was quite a while ago now I think about it. Gosh, how time flies, eh? Uh, where I made a micro-scale Saturn V, but that was mainly to be an actual Saturn V, just in small scale. This is just an Apollo-style rocket. Um, that's it, an Apollo-style rocket that goes to the Mun. I did consider having a Saturn V-esque profile in that it has three stages to orbit, the first stage being five identical engines, uh, the second stage being five identical engines again, and the third stage being one engine, but uh, it just didn't really work. The actual engines available to us in Kerbal Space Program didn't really lend that setup to be kind of feasible. So this is what I've gone with. I've gone with the two stage to orbit setup and then, you know, an Apollo style configuration thereafter. And I mean, the actual stock uh, Apollo rocket that comes with Kerbal Space Program is only two stage to orbit as well. So even squad knew that this is the better way of doing Saturn V's in Kerbal Space Program. Not that this is anything like a Saturn V by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I, I hope you get to the gist of what I'm trying to get at and what I'm trying to achieve with this mission. So we fire stage one, which is fairly similar-ish <laughs> to the Saturn V in that it's five engines. Not all the same though. We've got one uh, Reliant engine in the center, complemented by those four peripherally mounted engines, which I forget the name of. I think they're just the peripherally mounted Spark. I don't know if they've got a different name. Should have checked. Let's move on. Uh, the benefit of this setup is that the Reliant engine itself doesn't have any thrust vectoring, which would make this rocket quite difficult to control. Luckily, those four peripheral engines do have some gimbal available to them, so they're going to be the ones that provide the steering, whilst the central Reliant provides the bulk of our thrust. Or at least it did, as, uh, as we can now see, we have run out of fuel in that stage. We can get ready to deploy the second stage, which is just going to be a Terrier engine. It has a colossal amount of Delta V, so it's going to be doing, uh, well, it's going to complete our actual ascension. Then it's going to circularize us around Kerbin, and then it's finally going to perform our Kerbin to Mun transfer burn. I did say earlier that, you know, I didn't have much time to make a video this week, so I had to keep the mission fairly simple, but I've had a fair number of comments quite recently uh, asking me to make more videos like this. Not as in, you know, micro-scale missions, but missions that use the uh, the Mark 1 parts and indeed just the lower tech tree parts. Uh, usually my missions involve crafts with like monstrous fuel tank layouts, all the high tier engine parts, that sort of thing. But I've had a few comments saying people want to see some of the more low techy stuff. So maybe that's be this would be kind of a, a way of fulfilling that request. And I don't know, what do people in the comments feel? Do, would you like to see more missions like this where it uses sort of less than high tier parts? You know, more low tech stuff, more, you know, realistic rockets that you could use in a campaign mode. Admittedly, this is probably not a very good rocket to use in campaign mode because you can do far more efficient designs <laughs> for a campaign or science mode. The issue with this rocket is it doesn't carry any science experiment, so it's not all that useful from a practical point of view. I'm mainly doing it for the fun of it because, you know, people always ask me, like, how do you still play KSP without getting bored? But, like, I don't know, I still find the game fun, and I, like, I find missions like this quite fun. So, for me, it's not really an issue. But I think if you wanted to do something a bit more practical in terms of unlocking science points, I would probably steer you more towards the rockets I used in Laon Aerospace, as in the actual uh, tutorial series I did. Uh, that's got some good beginner rockets there. But would you, what do you guys think about me doing more missions like this, where I use the low-tech parts to do kind of more ambitious stuff, like maybe low-tech to ELU, that sort of thing? Do let me know. 
Uh, I am aware that a lot of my micro scale missions, like parts that are very small, so again, Mark 1 size and below parts, they tend to do quite well. You know, my last really successful video was my Tylo base video. I think it's close to 700,000 views as I record this. Uh, and that used pretty low tech stuff, as in the actual base itself used fairly small pieces, I should say. And uh, my I did a micro scale space station all that not not all that long ago. And again, that did quite well. So who knows? Maybe you guys uh, have something to add to this thought process I'm currently having. There we are, ejecting the uh, air quotes launch escape system there. I didn't bother actually making it a functional one, just an aesthetic one. Uh, that little nose cone at the front of the rocket. And as you can see, we are now on our way to the moon. So we can reconfigure our... Uh, air quotes Saturn V, or at least what's left of it, uh, into the Apollo-style configuration that we get to the moon. As you can see, I initially set ourselves up on a collision course just so that the detached fairings, and indeed that terrier stage, will crash into the surface of the moon and not remain stuck in orbit. We are uh, once again always thinking of the space polar bears. We've got to protect them. Let's just check in on Jebediah there, nice and cosy, in his, uh, you know, fairly small <laughs> living quarters. And there's a beautiful shot of Kerbin just there. Every single week without fail, I always get questions about what visual mods I use. Guys, just go on Google, uh, just type in how to make KSP look good. There's always an up-to-date Reddit thread. The issue with me telling you what mods I'm using in videos is that if you come back to this video like a year later, chances are those mods aren't relevant anymore or there are better ones available or they're not compatible with the most recent update, which is why I don't always say what visual mods I'm using. I just Google KSP visual mods and I just install the latest ones that are working and just play around with what you like, you know? There are people who have much better looking Kerbins than me. So just play around, see what you like, and you do it that way. And, uh... And there we are. So we are now pretty much circularized around the moon. I did do my retrograde burn a little bit too soon, so I decided to stop, <laughs> go along a bit to get to the periapsis once more and do another retrograde burn to make sure our orbit was as circular as possible. But that is kind of phase one of this mission done. We are now in low moon orbit. The next thing to do is get Jebediah on EVA so he can board the little command seat there on the lander. And then we can get ready to perform our landing. Now, of course, uh, to address probably what is obvious, uh, one issue, one way in which this differs from Apollo again is that we only have one crew member. Unlike Apollo, where we had two, we would we would have two Kerbals if we were doing a true Saturn V recreation. We'd have two Kerbals going down to the surface of the Moon and leave one left in orbit in the Lunar Command module. Of course, this is a mission aiming to be as small as possible, and so in order to achieve that, we can only take one Kerbal, which came with the interesting challenge that we're going to have to dock this thing back to what is effectively a piece of debris. You know, the command pod left in orbit doesn't have any probe cores or anything like that, so I'm afraid we can't do the, uh, air quotes, loud and lazy method of docking this time around. We're gonna have to try and do things the tricky way. And it's gonna be even more difficult because we don't have any model propellant, which is obviously meant to be used for docking in a traditional sense, so... Uh, it's gonna be interesting, so do stay tuned for that. Trying to get that viewer retention up, which admittedly... Anyone that would have an issue with that have probably already gone. My average view, my average viewer retention is like three minutes on this channel, so I feel like bringing this up eight minutes into the video, it's probably too little too late. But we can get around to doing the most important part of this mission, which is, of course, planting our flag on the moon. And uh, we can do a little bit of science, I guess, as well. We are, of course, playing on my science mode. Uh, science mode? Science uh, save file. Not really that necessary because we do have all of the tech tree unlocked, but then again there are a lot of folks, and I see where they're coming from, who say that once you've unlocked the tech tree, any science you unlock thereafter becomes your score. So there we are, maybe we should try and... Maybe we should try and get to like a million. I don't know, is that realistic? I don't even know how many science points I have. I very rarely do science experiments on my missions and I think about it because, again, I, I don't have any need to because I've got the tech tree unlocked. Maybe I should try and set a, a lofty ambition to get some sort of arbitrary science goal. I mean, I don't know how much longer we're going to keep this safe far because it's starting to get a bit cluttered. Not just like orbits and stuff around various celestial bodies, but just like the actual space plane hangar and vehicle assembly building. There's so many saved ships. It's impossible to like, once I save a vessel, I typically then don't fly the mission right away. I'll just go go to work or something because generally my uh, my my schedule for making YouTube videos whilst maintaining a full-time job is by getting up at like five or six o'clock in the morning, doing a little bit of work on the craft, then going to work and then getting home and then flying the mission. And that's just how I live my life. So usually I'll edit the craft and then have to save it and go to work. And then when I get back from work and fire at the computer, it's so tedious scrolling through the list of crafts. 
in the vehicle assembly building and space plane hangar trying to find the one I was working on. So I think it would be nice to make a new save file for that point of view. And maybe I should just bite the bullet and uh, try career mode. I don't know. I did say last, last Kerbal Space Program video that I'm not sure how well career mode lends itself to a YouTube series because there's a lot of grinding and just repetitiveness and monotony. But maybe you guys would like to see a career mode. I think you guys know what you want more than what I think you want. Usually the videos that I think will do well do abysmally and the videos that I think are just going to be like filler uh, do really, really well. I mean, I said before, my most my most popular video on this channel is my building a space station video. I think it's got like just over 5 million views now, I think. And uh, I made that video, it was, it was a video like this, where it was just going to be filler in between two weeks whilst I was busy working on other missions. I was like, ah, oh, just quickly slap together a space station video and it turned out to become, uh, it, went, it went viral. So, you know, I, I've always felt there has been a bit of a disconnect between what I think people want and what people want <laughs> what my viewers want i guess because i guess one reason would be that uh most players in kerbal space program never go further than the mun like squad did a survey and they found that something like 90 percent of players never go further than the mun so maybe like my videos in low kermit orbit minmus and mun do better because they're more relatable who knows? Mystery for the ages, I bet. Anyway, he could see me doing my very clumsy docking. One way I could have made this docking procedure easier would have been to have Jebediah leave the command seat, board the command module, and then I'd be able to control both vessels myself because obviously the lander can has a probe core to control it. So that way we could just make sure that both vessels aligned manually uh, without having to sort of orient myself relative to the drifting command pod and indeed perform the low and lazy method of docking where you just use the auto SES to do it all for you but I thought I'd just make things difficult for myself because I'm a masochist at the end of the day and I thought it'd make a I thought it would make for a bit more of an interesting video if I tried to make things a little bit more challenging for myself so the first thing we're going to do now is deorbit ourselves to uh make sure that our lander does not stay left in mun orbit it will crash into the surface and that's it and then we can obviously Make sure that we reorbit so that we don't meet a similar fate. And then it's just a case of uh, making a maneuver node, dragging out the prograde marker so that we're heading on an orbit backwards relative to the Mun, so that we end up dropping our Kerbin periapsis into the atmosphere. I'm going for a height of around 20 kilometers. We've got a heat shield and we don't need to worry about saving things like wings. So we can go for a much lower periapsis than I would go for if I was, say, flying an SSTO. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. There we are. Beautiful. And then that's it. We, I guess we could just decouple that lower stage. And uh, we are just going to go home. So I'm going to just disable SAS so we don't use up all of our electric charge prior to re-entry. Although it wouldn't be that big of a deal if we did because everything is now deployed. The parachute will just go when it's ready to go. I don't need to do anything else. But I did want to maintain some SAS power because we only have one parachute here. And it's on the side of the craft. So when it deploys... The, uh, the little window of the craft is going to smash into the ocean first, which I don't want. I'd quite like it to land, you know, base first. So I'm going to use SAS to flip ourselves into a more desirable orientation. So right before surface impact, I'm just keeping an eye on that altitude gauge. And there's the water coming into view. So we can activate SAS and flip ourselves up and we can land, you know, in a better, in a better, in a better way. And there we are. We've done it. Congratulations, Jebediah, on another successful mission to the Mun. We can time warp across to the daytime to really admire that beautiful ocean, which comes... I know I said I wasn't going to say what visual mods I'm using, but I'm using the mod scatterer to get that beautiful ocean effect. And there we are. And then, without further ado, we can recover our vessel and see what we are. And we had 147.3 science, bringing our total score to 7,522.8. Fairly respectable, I think. I don't know. Anyway, I hopefully I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, there's more on the screen. Left hand side is one chosen for you by YouTube's recommendation algorithm. The one on the right is my most recent upload. Links to uh, Twitter, Discord, Instagram, all the good stuff in the description, and also merchandise. Can't forget that. Thank you for watching, guys. Goodbye.